Hey everyone, today I'm having a conversation with Henri Strom. He's a tattoo artist out of Bold as Brass in Liverpool. He is known for his unique tattoo style known as Dark Trash Realism. Henri, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you uh, taking some time out to talk to me today. Um, you are the first artist that I'm having on this little series to where I'm just interviewing people from the tattoo industry that uh, I think people have been inspired by. So thank you, I appreciate it. Awesome, thank you so much as well. Honor to yeah. be part one, I guess. And yeah, absolutely. Um, so I saw your video on YouTube and I saw that you also have a book that goes along with it. Uh, it's called 10 Years of Tattooing. Um, can you just talk in short about the moment that you realized that you wanted to go from being an artist on paper to starting to tattoo? Because that is kind of like a big jump. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess everything on uh, like that is in that uh, sort of documentary already there. But in the short, yeah. uh, so I was always into drawing and always into horror. I don't know why and how, but since I was like five, six years old, I was already obsessed with like skulls and vampires and zombies. Scared of them as well, but I really enjoyed like, I don't know, thinking about them all and weird horror stories and stuff like that. So yeah. I was always going towards that direction anyway yeah so always like that kind of stuff and because i like that kind of stuff i had to create something you know because i wanted to draw pictures of what I, what my imagination is and and what's in my head because yeah, i think nowadays it's a bit different because obviously you can just google any photo in the world or any drawing in the world and stuff but back then you know like god knows how many years ago there was nothing there and so if you wanted if you see something for example in my case if i saw something on the tv and I wanted to capture it or something, I was, I had to draw it on the paper. So that's kind of how I started drawing anything really in, like in my life, I guess. Right. And drawing a lot of monsters and stuff like that and always into that stuff. And then eventually I got into like music as well. <laughs> because I kind of connected those two together, you know, more like metal music and stuff like that. And that kind of, as well, everything became together with that. And so, metal artists they had great artwork or their albums and the band merch and and the lead singers or any really um artists were covered in tattoos as well so that sort of then i realized that uh, tattoo uh, that drawings can also be incorporated not just on the paper but it can be on a skin or on the t-shirts on or any canvas really i kind of never thought about it i never thought about paintings or anything like that but after i saw like after I got into metal music, I guess that that that's the way I got into um, tattoos and all that stuff. And then, of course, I was still young, but I already knew that I want to cover myself with many, many tattoos, especially yeah. with skulls and snakes and stuff like that. You know, some really old school metal. But um, so, yeah. And, and then eventually I started getting some tattoos when I was like old enough and was keep drawing. I was just carrying on drawing still more and more tattoo designs. I went, was drawing like full sleeves, what I wouldn't get myself one day, but it wasn't just one sleeve, it was like 50, 50 sleeves, you know, I was just drawing nonstop and thinking what other tattoos I could add in the future on my body. And then eventually I start thinking, well, I'm drawing them anyway. And, you know, and when I go to get them tattooed, might as well do it myself, kind of almost, you know, because um, as well, uh, back home when I, started to get tattoos that was sort of that time when uh, artists were not kind of custom designed so you would have to walk in the studio either pick something from the wall or you had to present your own drawing or someone else's drawing uh, to be able to get that tattooed image right. so and uh, yeah kind of at one point i figured out well i'm doing half of the job anyway myself you know i just bringing them bringing drawings to the artists and sometimes i even realized that they don't really care about it at all and i, I had all that passion in me i was like damn i could have done done better job you know almost right and so kind of spiraled from there that's cool so how old were you when you first got your tattoo machine oh i was i'm talking like it was a really long time ago but yeah because the country where I'm from, it's like everything is 20 years uh, behind, you know. So, I when I got my first tattoo machine, I was about 23 or 20 okay. or something yeah. like that. That's quite long. But I started getting tattooed since I was 18. Okay. Very cool. Same here. 
Um, I started getting uh, tattooed when I was 18 as well. I, my parents didn't want me to get tattooed. Like they were super like, I don't know, conservative. And it was like, if you want to get a tattoo, you have to not be living here kind of thing. But I just got them anyway and just kind of hid them. You grew up with your mom, correct? No, I actually grew up with my sister and my grandma and my oh, mom okay. as well. But my mom was like, she was living all around. And so it was okay. more like I grew up with my grandma and my sister together. Okay. So how was your grandmother when you started getting tattooed? Was that like an issue or was it just she was supportive? Um, unfortunately, she passed away, like, oh. after having a few tattoos only, so I don't think she even noticed me getting tattoos at all, and my sister wow. well, didn't really care. Um, my mom, she was all right. She, like, the first tattoo when I did, she, did, she didn't think it was real back then, so <laughs> kind of ignored it. Yeah. I had already a lot of piercings in my face, so she kind of really didn't like those, because... Right. Yeah, I don't know. So I think when I when she saw that I get in tattoos, she kind of didn't mind it as much as the piercings, <laughs> as weird as it sounds. But I, right. I kind of see how it is because tattoo technically is just a painting on underneath the skin. You know, it's nothing kind of. Uh, to me personally, it's almost no body mod there. You know, I, obviously it is a huge body mod, but I can see right. how how other people see that it's kind of normal compared to piercing because piercing is more extreme. I think. Oh, for sure. So yeah, yeah they, I, I agree. All kind of, they all reacted pretty all right, I guess. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, they get they get over it. But also uh, referencing that video and that book, um, you did talk about struggling as an artist to where you were moving around and you didn't even really have enough money to kind of get on a train at one point. You said you were kind of like planning out your trip through a city, uh, city uh, to try to get a job at a tattoo shop. So was there a certain moment where you kind of realized like uh like this is a sink or swim kind of thing and then also was there also a moment where you realized you started to make it as an artist and you were like okay i'm going to be all right because i totally identify with that uh that desperation of trying to find yourself and be able to pr provide for yourself and for your family as an artist um so was there that certain moment where you thought like oh, okay i'm gonna be okay it's hard to think now. I, I think I never really thought that there's any other way uh, for me not to be an artist. I, I never, right. never could have even imagined that I can make a decent living out of it. You know, for me, that wasn't even an option. Right. And I, I don't know. I, back then, I never thought you can, like, you know, make money out of it. It's kind of, for me, was more survival mode, you know, and if I could yeah. survive on it, I was... I was happy. I also didn't have family back then. I was all by myself. Well, I had some okay. like relationships and stuff, but I, I was all by myself. You know, I didn't have kids or anything. So, um, so you just had to stay alive. I, I guess I, I was really depressed, you know, and like yeah. I feel like traumatized from that time. But it it kind of I don't know. I never never kind of thought any other ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird for me to look back because it kind of feels like it was all in some sort of cloud. I think it's also because of the all the emotions back then and stuff like that. So it's hard to go back and go inside my head and kind of remember how it was. Oh, yeah, for sure. I get that. So your tattoos, you have a lot of uh, musicians and actors as your like base reference. And then you kind of turn them into your own thing. Have you ever had an actor or a musician reach out to you after they saw a tattoo that you did of them? And if so, what was their reaction? Um, I had a couple, uh, mostly they comment on it or, or like uh, reshare it or something like that. So right, they right. don't directly reach out and, and like have a conversation with me, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, uh, I yeah. did one of Paris Hilton uh, a few years back and she commented on it a <laughs> lot. So that's kind of a still something to comment as well. If that was even her, I don't know if that was maybe. Right. Any, and that also had like horns and all that stuff around. So. Yeah. Well, that's cool either way. So as a family man, you have a wife and a daughter, correct? Two daughters. Two daughters. Okay, cool. So do you find uh, it difficult to have a balance between being a full-time artist and also a full-time father and husband. I find that to be very challenging because I get super focused on one or the other. Do you have a problem with that or are you more so balanced? Yeah, I think I have a quite a huge problem with it, obviously. But 
but in a, not in a bad way, I guess. Right. For me, it kind of became all together, you know, I became like a parent together with me becoming a busier tattoo artist. So I had to kind of be, I had to work around with it uh, slowly, slowly, it kind of all became a slow process. So slowly I was starting to learn how to be a family man and slowly I started to learn how to be full time tattoo artist. So it all kind of came together at the same time. And I think that's why it was a little bit different to me to balance it and adjust to it and it was easier. I think then it would be, for example, other way around. If I already had like full time family and I had to start full time investing myself in tattooing or yeah, vice versa. But right now, yeah, I'm struggling, of course, with the free time. But I think I balance it really well. But I think the only thing what I don't have at all is my own space or my own time because either it's tattoo or it's family and there's no me here at all. You know, it's all right. just them. Uh, I don't mind at all. I'm like, not selfish or anything so I, I don't care if i i never have if, if i don't have time to watch like my favorite films or shows i yeah. don't really care about it as long as i'm here around all of them and stuff so i i think i, I do struggle with the free time and kind of balancing it and always yeah. trying my best and just work late nights and early mornings and stuff like that to to kind of try my best and stuff work around i have a, a list of kind of Rapid fire questions. Some of them are would you rather's and others are just, I want to see what your answer is off the top of your head. So the first couple are about tattooing and the next couple are just about you. Um, so don't think too hard about these questions. Just uh, spit out whatever comes out first. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. The first one is what is your go-to tattoo machine and needles right now? My go-to tattoo machine right now is Cheyenne Pen, original one with the wire still. I'm just so used to them, so I just use it most of the times. And my needles, you mean the size of the needles or the... Uh, uh, the brand or the size, whatever you want to tell me. Brand is like Quadron and T-Tex I'm still using and some Cheyenne and the size, uh, like <laughs> a lot of sizes, different ones, oh, I yeah. guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite and least favorite area of the body to tattoo? I'll start with least favorite because that's easier. Well, my least favorite is uh, neck pieces. I really hate those. Inner thighs as well. I have a lot of them recently. So um, knees, elbows, all that stuff. Uh, top, of, top of the foot as well, I really dislike. And probably like genitals. I never tattooed them, but I assume that I wouldn't enjoy it. Um, yeah. And my favorite parts of the body, side of the leg, probably, and forearm, outer forearm, inner forearm as well, like bicep area. I love that one. Yeah, so legs and arms are definitely the best, for sure. Um, if you had to pick, uh, what would you be if you weren't a tattoo artist? I know you mentioned earlier that this is what you just feel like you're wired to be, but if you had to pick something else... If tattooing didn't exist, what would it be? Well, it depends <laughs> what kind of success I can have <laughs> on sort of yeah. field. You know, that all depends on that. But if it was completely up to me, uh, I would be a musician probably. I would love to do music. Uh, another thing I really always wanted to do is maybe create like a props for uh, movies and stuff like that. That'd be That'd cool. Be cool. You know, like miniature figures, even for like like dolls for the Tim Burton movies and stuff like that. I really enjoyed those. So I think something creative I would still pursue uh would you rather design on a ipad or on a piece of paper with a pencil if it was my choice i would rather do it on the paper with a pencil but mostly now because of the family and kids i do it on my ipad because it saves time but i yeah. prefer paper, paper always prefer yeah paper. yeah yeah i feel like a lot of artists prefer paper over ipad just because it's the feel of it i guess Everyone's just used to as well. Everyone learned to draw on the paper, so it's like more natural, I think. Coil or rotary? Coil. Oh, no, sorry, rotary. <laughs> rotary. Oh, I tripped you up there. I do love <laughs> coils, though. They are awesome, but yeah. I, I, I only use rotaries now. Yeah, same here. I haven't used a coil in a really long time either. Uh, top three horror films of all time? Um, no, I need to think. It Follows, <laughs> one of them. Have you seen that one? No. It follows, you said? It's like great cin cinematography of that one. It's not that scary, okay. but it's just beautiful. And soundtrack is like out of this world. Okay. And what else? So hard. No, I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, could keep it at, we can keep it at one if you want. I, I really love Hereditary as well. 
And the third one, I'd say Dead Silence. Um, what would then be your most overrated uh, horror movie of all time? Well, most of them, really. <laughs> like, no. pretty ninety-five percent of the horror films are like that, I, I believe. So, but yeah. if I had to pick one, God, I can't even imagine. You know, I can't I haven't even thought about it. Uh, paranormal Activity, maybe. Uh, corn or Slipknot. Corn. Lincoln Park or Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. And if you can keep only one of these, the other one will be erased from existence and you'll no longer need it for survival. Which one would you keep, either sleep or food? I'll give up food. You'll give up food? Yeah. yeah. You like sleep that much? No, I actually love food more than sleep, but that's why I would want to give it up so I don't waste my time on food, you know? So. Oh, okay. See, I, I feel like if I were to get rid of sleep, I could get so much more done. And then I would just kind, kind of, of like... Be hungry all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, here, stay on the line with me, but I'm going to end the video. Um, thank you for coming on to talk to us. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me, and yeah, it was an honor to be here. So if you guys wanted to check out more of what Anris is up to and see his work, I'll link his Instagram, website, and YouTube channel down in the video description so you can check it out. But either way, I hope that you guys enjoyed this type of video. I'm going to try to make this little bit of a series, and I have a couple other artists lined up for the next two months. But if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you watching. Have a good day.